Welcome to South Sound Seniors, a program for and about older adults in our community. And as some of you know, every other month we have a guest that has previously talked to the Senior Action Network. And that's our guest this month, Robert Coit, the Executive Director of the Thurston County Food Bank. Welcome, Robert. Thanks for inviting me, Eileen. You are welcome. We go a ways back. We do indeed. And it is so nice to see you. It was nice to see you at SAN this past month and hear your talk about the Thurston County Food Bank. Oh, I thought you left the room when I started talking. No. You actually stayed? I here? stayed the wow. whole time. I am honored. Well, you should be. <laughs> I had to see if, if, you, if I had really taught you everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> and more. And more. So I have to say the big joke is, Robert, you used to work at Senior Services and then moved on to the food bank and I was so sad to see you go. But since we're so close to each other geographically in the downtown Olympia area, many times we have tours of United Way people or maybe some city council people. And if they come to me first, I always say to them, now make sure you say to Robert, oh, I hear Eileen taught you everything she knows. And they all look at me like, and I said, just tell him, he'll get a kick out of it. Because the reality was, you probably taught me more than I ever taught you, and you were very good at upward delegation. I remember that. I think that's a compliment, Eileen, <laughs> but I'm not 100% sure. It is a compliment. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll be honored twice today. <laughs> Excellent. So I was really very impressed at your presentation to the Senior Action Network about the food bank. But I'm gonna ask you a question. I know you've been there for over 10 years now, for sure. Over 10 is correct. And so what is the real number? The real number is over 10, less than 20. Okay, so somewhere in the middle there. Somewhere in the middle, maybe right smack dab uh, in the middle. 15. 15. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that's a long time and there's been a lot of changes and you really have kind of the whole operation there broken down into four categories. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, we call them program service groups. Okay. Tell me about those. So we have four program service groups, which means a collection of programs which have a common theme, purpose. Essentially, each of them have their own mission statement with strategic goals and objectives as a group. So one of the ones that people aren't as aware of is the client service program service group. I know it's a mouthful. <laughs> Department of Redundancy. That's Department. right. Yeah. Right there at the food bank in River City. Yep. <laughs> um, and so some of the services they provide is the standard information referral. Um, but we also have a web-based portal that we can access to basically do pre-screening for federal and state programs. Mm -hmm. So we can put in an individual or a household's information and, and print out a list of programs they might be eligible for. Most importantly for us and the primary reason for the service mm -hmm. is we can help someone apply for the basic food program, nationally known as SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program and what the community probably best knows as food stamps. Mm -hmm. And so since we're an anti-hunger organization, being able to sign people up for that benefit on site is really important to us. Mm -hmm. And then we have a program specifically um, designed to serve seniors. It's a federal commodities program called the Commodity Supplemental Food Program. Mm -hmm. I know, CSFP. <laughs> um, and it's for older adults, 60 plus. Mm -hmm. Um, it is means tested. Um, we have a caseload of 950 mm -hmm. um, seniors and it's per individual. Um, so we have to do some internal initial assessments and then reassess every six months. But what it really means to an individual is they get another box of food when they visit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's just us leveraging federal resources, bringing them into our community to be able to give more food out to individuals mm -hmm. and households. So that's client services, services. Okay. and there's more, but you know, you gotta <laughs> summarize since I know we don't have three hours. And then the second one that people probably aren't aware of is our nutrition education program service group. 
So that's via a contract with the state's Department of Health. Mm -hmm. And we actually do nutrition education sessions in classrooms in three schools in the North Thurston School District. Oh, wow. And so it's this class series of nine to 10 sessions and they're about 45 minutes long each. So essentially with the partnership of the teacher, we take over their class for an hour. Mm -hmm. wow. And the focus is to get kids excited about eating fruits and vegetables, uh -huh. drinking more water, oh, and eating wow. whole grains. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's age appropriate curriculum, has some good strategies and different mm -hmm. bells and whistles. But in the end, what's most fun is to cook something, make something, chop and slice, and then sample uh -huh. what it is. Nice. And then we also do that same work at senior centers because one of the target mm -hmm. populations are, again, older adults. Mm -hmm. um, but there it's more nutritional counseling, how to shop better, how to use the food bank, um, focusing on nutrient-dense foods again and then policy system and environmental changes, which we'll save for another day. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the third division is distribution. It's probably one of our largest program service groups, and that's housed at the warehouse in Tumwater. Mm -hmm. And essentially that's us accepting food either from another larger nonprofit, Think Food Lifeline, Northwest Harvest, the state through the Department of Agriculture, the federal government through USDA, mm -hmm and trucks show up, we break the load down and distribute food out into the different smaller organizations. So you're the hub. In some ways, we're mm -hmm. what's referred to as a regional distribution organization, and in one system, a partner distribution organization. But essentially, as you described, the food comes to us, we break it down and ship it out. Mm -hmm. um, under those contracts, in some cases, it's four counties, some cases three, mm -hmm. in a few cases, just one. So mm -hmm. our reach is beyond Thurston County now, Lewis, Mason, and Kitsap, depending on the contract. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one is procurement, um, program service group. So some examples there that you might not think of. We have a long-standing partnership with the Olympia Kiwanis, and they have a garden, the Food Bank Garden. Mm -hmm. It's actually four different gardens, about five acres in some total. And um, one of our staff works for Kiwanis, works with Kiwanis and the volunteers, and they grow food for the food bank. Um, typically 65 to 70,000 pounds a year. That's a but lot that's of food. bringing food into our system, locally mm -hmm. grown organic practices. Um, also have a gleaning program where we go out and glean produce from local growers, mm -hmm. generally CSA growers, smaller mm -hmm. farms. And that again brings in 75 to 80,000 pounds a summer in a good year, 50 to 60 in a slower year. Mm -hmm. But again, fresh produce into our system and into the hands of needy families. So mm -hmm. those would be some examples of procurement. Yeah. Lots to keep going, I think. We used to talk about keeping the plates spinning, but I think you're spinning plates and juggling over here at the same time. Yeah, fortunately I'm not juggling alone Yeah, and have some very talented and gifted staff and committed volunteers. Um, how many, really can I ask how many paid staff and how many volunteer staff you have? So in the summer months at peak, we have 24 to 25 paid staff, probably another three um, placement. So examples would be AmeriCorps Youth and Service, the VISTA volunteer program, mm -hmm. um, work study through one of the colleges. Mm -hmm. And then um, depending on how you count it, typically about 7,000 volunteers organization-wide mm -hmm. uh, across the counties. Wow. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. A lot of dedicated people too. Yeah. yeah, but that's what makes it work. Uh -huh. I mean, our administrative overhead's 2%. There's no way we could do that without, without. the support of key volunteers. Right. There's just no way. Right. Well, it seems to me you're not getting bored because you keep expanding. <laughs> There's one expansion that I know I've been hearing a lot of, and the new geographic area. You kind of have served the Lacey area through some of your satellites before, but now you're actually getting a footprint in Lacey. Yeah, that's um, our current big lift. Mm -hmm. um, it's a rather unique partnership in that it's part of an initiative between 
the Chamber of Commerce in the Lacey area, the North Thurston School District, again, Lacey area, and the City of Lacey. And it's called a Compassionate Community Initiative. Mm -hmm. And the intent is to help create a stronger, positive community to help prevent, divert unfortunate circumstances, mm -hmm. right? So it's lifting up the positives rather than focusing on the negatives is mm -hmm. sort of my lay person's description. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the three of them together chose the Lacey Food Bank Project as their first compassionate community mm -hmm. project to create a stronger, more vibrant and compassionate Lacey. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite stories is the um, students in the North Thurston School Districts did a change drive, mostly pennies, mm -hmm. the first year of the project and raised almost 30 some thousand dollars. It's a lot of pennies. It's a lot of pennies and quarters and nickels and dimes of course. Yeah. But just imagine the power of children out in the community mm -hmm. raising money for a good purpose. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, City of Lacey did its part too. Mm -hmm. um, both the staff with Jeans Days and volunteering mm -hmm. on the United Way Day of Caring, mm -hmm. um, giving their employees an opportunity to support it. And the Chamber of Commerce helping us connect to local businesses and in-kind resources and then support from the community and grants mm -hmm. and uh, competitive grants at the federal state level, um, support well, from the city of Lacey through all, their CDBG. All coming together. All coming together to do one thing. Um, mm -hmm. The property um, was pretty ugly, um, vacant for a while. Mm -hmm. Think uh, dog kennels with junkyard dogs, no, no offense to Izzy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, abandoned cars. Mm. Um, buildings that were used for purposes they were not built for. Um, so it's a nice opportunity to take that property, clean it up, fix it up, and make it a real resource to the community. Mm -hmm. So it's a campus. There's mm -hmm. a garden in the back of the property. Um, it's a program run by Grub. It's their veteran garden. Mm -hmm. So it's a therapeutic program that happens to grow some food as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. And at the front of the property on the Martin Street side, we have a farm stand and it's for our clients, for low and moderate income households, but it's to provide produce during the growing season, mm -hmm. which the food bank will probably define somewhere around April till somewhere around November. Mm -hmm. And it's just to make more produce available as an additional supplement to what they receive. Mm -hmm. um, and then the center building is still the old one. It'll be torn down probably January and then we'll start construction of the food bank itself. And that's important because it'll mirror the services we provide downtown. Mm -hmm. So shopping model, mm -hmm. full on freezer, refrigeration, all the bells and whistles. Um, a former board member said, I think in a public setting, something to the effect that everything we learned from our experiences downtown will be put into practice <laughs> at the Lacey site. Because you get to build it from the ground yeah, up and you don't really often nice. get to do that. You don't have to retrofit. And yeah. Squeeze things in. So that's a big lift right now. Mm -hmm. So then we'll have three properties that I get to help manage, three facilities, mm -hmm. one warehouse and two client service centers. Right. Yeah. Wow. And along with that new property, you're also busy taking other projects. You have some new distribution of personal hygiene products and things like that. You want to talk about that a bit? Yeah, so one of the things we try to mirror is the shopping experience that someone might have at a grocer. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? So we have shopping carts and you can use them as you shop. Um, our version of valet parking, which means you leave the shopping cart at the door, go get your car, bring it up, and we'll help you load it. Uh -huh. um, but it's everything from a waiting area, mm -hmm. recipes, cooking demos, other services. But we've always focused primarily on food. But we all know that you don't just go to the grocer for food, your mm -hmm. prime purpose, but there are other things that you can get there too. So the first expansion was um, food for pets, primarily cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. So it's been about a year, but we have a very strong partnership with the Humane Society and we're able to give out pet food every day we're open to the people that come and use our services. 
And for us, pet food that's designed for pets is the right food to give them. Mm -hmm. And food designed for people is the food people should eat. Uh, there's certainly things that cross over. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a nutritionist, but we really don't want animals eating food they shouldn't be or people giving away food to their animals that they don't really have the ability to do. Mm -hmm. So the best way to do that is provide pet food. Yeah. Right? So that was a pretty heavy lift, but it's a great partnership, mm -hmm. really is. Um, and then most recently, as of July 1st, we now operate the other bank within the Thurston County Food Bank. So mm -hmm. if you're not familiar with that service, it's basically the non-food items a household would need, mm -hmm. um, diapers for children, incontinence products, um, hygiene products for women, hygiene products for men, toothbrushes, deodorant, dish soap, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Think about 10 or 15 key items you would need in your household. Mm -hmm. And so we're ramping that up and essentially we operate the other bank in the context of our building once a month mm -hmm. for what we refer to as a full visit, uh. which means everything we have. Mm -hmm. And then we're moving to two additional days, one on the day we serve head of households with small children, baby day, mm -hmm. and the day we operate for older adults or people with disabilities, senior, senior day. day. <laughs> and so those will be partial visits. You can get additional items, not as much, not everything, mm -hmm. but kind of targeted to those populations. Um, and then any day you come, we have essentially emergency supplies. Mm -hmm that's available all month long. Um, the biggest thing for us is scaling it up. I mean, one of the biggest challenges I have is just the sheer number of people we serve. So when we add a new program, mm -hmm. you know, it may have lived elsewhere and they served 100 or 200 people a month. Mm -hmm. On a busy Wednesday, we'll do that an hour and a half. Wow. So, you know, if you're doing that on a Wednesday and you're open six hours, that's 300 times Right. But someone else did in a month and you're doing that in a day. Yeah. So the capacity to do that every day you're open just doesn't really exist. Yeah. So that's why this mixed model, full mm -hmm. visit, partials, emergency. Mm -hmm. But I want to grow it to at least two full on days each month, two mm -hmm. partial days. Yeah. But we have to scale it up. Um, the only thing that really makes it possible is the warehouse where we can purchase in bulk, get supplies and donations in bulk and kind of warehouse it. Yeah. Because otherwise it would be extremely difficult if you're just working in a small space. Yeah. yeah. But that's newer for us. Mm -hmm. um, board supported. Mm -hmm. A little bit of conversation is it mission drift. But again, if you think of a grocer, it's not really mission drift. And mm -hmm. essentially our philosophy is food to cash equivalent. And if you're having trouble with your household budget, please come to the food bank free up some dollars in your food budget, pay the rent, Right. free up some food dollars, go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. So it's not just hungry families now, it's people that are insecure, not just food insecure, right. people at risk. Yeah. 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 And just think of food in a different way. That doesn't mean we don't have hungry families coming or people in crisis. Mm -hmm. It just means that our the population, the people we serve now includes modern income households that yeah. just need help for a short period of time. Yeah. And that um, has really increased the numbers of people we serve. Yeah. Well, you do amazing things. And as one of, or actually two of the satellites that you serve are at the Lacey Senior Center and the Olympia Senior Center, I just know how much it means to folks to be able to get the additional food that helps make ends meet, especially at the end of the month for senior folks. I know for others, it's any time during the month. But I know you've also set up those satellites so that even on the days that the service center downtown might be closed, people can get food somewhere. Yeah, so one of the distribution models we have is what's called a satellite food bank system. That's our own way of calling what happens in other communities, but you have a central hub pushing food out to smaller food pantries. Mm -hmm. um, what's different about our model is that it's got a specific structure where we're trying to get to seven days a week of service. So, you know, if someone asked us to join the satellite food program and they want to be open on Wednesday from 
10 to 3? The answer is no, because we're open on Wednesday from 10 to 3. But mm -hmm. if they're willing to be open Thursday, you got a deal mm -hmm. because we're trying to get seven days a week service. We do have a few sites that are open on Saturday, which is a huge win. One that's open on Sunday occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, we have other sites that are open at night, evenings. Mm -hmm. um, some are geographically isolated. Think the end of Steamboat Island Road, Little Rock. Right. So the travel time and getting around is a challenge. Right. Some are partnerships where um, there's some expertise with the other provider. You might know an organization that has some expertise with older adults. So they really help us do a good job serving the most frail of mm -hmm. the older adults, people that are relying on dial-a-lift or challenged mm -hmm. in other ways. But we have a great partnership with Cielo that's now housed at Church of the Good Shepherd. Mm -hmm. And so they provide a lot of very important services to the Hispanic community. And being able to partner with them to reach that population is a very big deal. Yeah. Um, one of our best non-traditional partnerships is with the Tumwater Fire Department. Mm. So the union members volunteer their time, not on shift, and operate a satellite food bank at their fire station once a month. Wow in the evening hours, late afternoon, early evening. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's probably the premier service because it's almost like going to a Sonic. You don't have to leave your car, you place your order, they go inside, put it together, bring it out to the car, wish I you a good it. evening, you know, exaggerating a little bit, but the level of service is pretty that's doggone wonderful. amazing. Right. So, I mean, it's those kind of things that make the job fun, yeah. right? Yeah. Where you can do something a little different, a little wacky, mm -hmm. but has a big impact for the people that live in our communities. Yeah. So that's what the satellite system is about, yeah. which kind of gets back to Lacey. Lacey will be open Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, where downtown's open Monday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Friday. So yeah. again, trying to practice that seven day a week uh -huh. service. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I know we don't have too much time, but one little piece we really haven't talked about is the food rescue and trying to keep food out of the landfill that is still edible and good and should be getting to people. Can you talk just a, the, the two minute version of that? The two minute version of that. Okay. Well, um, for us it happens at a couple different levels. So at the very grassroots level, we've kind of outgrown the ability to make 50 stops for five or six items at each stop. I mean, we have a refrigerated vehicle, actually three now, two paid staff members and volunteers that do that route. So it needs to be 100, 250 pounds at a stop to really be worth that expense. So what we've done is started, started to partner with other organizations, mostly our satellites, and get them to pick up the smaller locations near their operation on the days they're open so the food still isn't wasted but I get out of the way. We just make the partnership and the connection. Um, but we still run two routes, Monday through Saturday, picking up food at grocery stores, a few restaurants, a school district, and some other locations. Um, and that's pretty heavy lift. And then at the top scale, we um, have a refrigerated box truck and we pick up donations primarily from regional distribution organizations. So mm -hmm. I can't really mention their names. They wish to remain anonymous, but um, they have brands, stores in our local community. But these regional distribution networks, these centers, serve generally three, four, or five state regions. So when they mess mm -hmm. up, it's a semi-tractor trailer, not a case mm -hmm. or a pallet or mm -hmm. a box. So. Um, recently we received, I think it was close to 26 pallets, so that's 65,000 pounds of potato chips, oh. <laughs> right? Another time we picked up, potato chips. yeah, another time we picked up eight pallets of ground turkey. Oh my goodness. And that is a big deal because then oh, we're yeah. offering frozen protein to the people that come to the food mm -hmm. bank. So, you know, it's all in deal. You take it all. Um, and again, the choice model that we use, if you want potato chips, you take potato chips. Right. If you don't want them, you leave them behind. Uh, but again, the warehouse is what makes that possible, just the size and scope of the operation changed. Mm -hmm. um, last year was a million five, million four or so pounds. So that's a lot of food that would have ended up in a landfill. Um, 
We still have some waste ourselves because when you pick up donations, some of them are marginal mm -hmm. and you have to call through it and you might get a 70 or 80 percent yield depending on what mm -hmm. it is. But again, because of volunteers willing to help us call through that, mm -hmm. we end up with a lot of great product. Yeah. One yeah. of the newer partnerships is with Starbucks. We pick mm -hmm. up Starbucks products during the graveyard shift mm -hmm. at uh, 47 Starbucks in wow. Pierce and Thurston counties. And so what's cool about that is the breakfast sandwiches, the wraps, the protein packs. Mm -hmm. um, we have those now and bagels and the other things. But it's sort of expanded the scope and variety of what we have to offer. So mm -hmm. that's been a really nice partnership too. Nice. Wow. Well, I know you personally work hard. I know your staff works really hard. and Especially one named Isaac yeah. <laughs> Mackenzie Sullivan. Yes, he yeah. does work at the Thurston County Food Bank and he really enjoys it. I'm so, glad to hear that. Yes. So but thank you for your leadership for everything you do to make not just Lacey, but really our whole community more compassionate. Um, I just am in awe of what you have done to That's grow that program. That's very kind of you to say, but that I did learn from you. <laughs> well, thanks. And please bring our thanks back to everybody that works with and for you. Thank you, I will. Okay. Well, you probably know now more about the Thurston County Food Bank than you did before. It is a wonderful place, and they are always looking for a volunteers, but in particular donations, and not just donations of that can of peas that you know you're not going to eat in your cupboard, but actually cash donations that can help them do things like build a Lacey Senior Center. So if you're looking for something to support, it is definitely a wonderful organization in our community. So hope you learned something. It's a good season to learn something about food as we go into our holiday seasons here. So again, think of those less fortunate than yourself and um, think of the Thurston County Food Bank. Thank you for being with us for our show this month and we look forward to seeing you next month.